All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, if the introduction here is to know a little bit more about uh, measles uh, per se, and uh, that's what I'm going to cover. So it's a, uh, it's a, a rash disease that, uh, in the absence of vaccination, is primarily a childhood vac uh, uh, rash disease, although we now are seeing it more and more in older individuals. Uh, but it remains one of the 10 most important causes of death in children due to infectious diseases. Uh, our early knowledge of uh, measles uh, epidemiology uh, came from studies of a physician, a Danish physician, who was uh, called to a measles outbreak on the Faroe Islands. And prior to uh, much contact between island populations and, and the mainland, uh, the populations were too small to uh, maintain measles, uh, uh, measles in the population. So that what he noticed uh, just from observing the, the, uh, the outbreak was that everybody, the last outbreak had been 60 years before. Uh, everybody who was born and uh, was alive at the time of the last outbreak was protected from measles. Everybody who had, had been born subsequently basically got measles, and it had a 14-day uh, incub uh, incubation period. So uh, he observed that there's lifelong uh, immunity to uh, reinfection with measles, and there's essentially 100% susceptibility to the virus. So that very high uh, rate of infectiousness is part of the, uh, the issue with respect to control of measles, and you'll hear more about that later. But <clears throat> The R naught uh, value here is approximately how many people, if everybody were susceptible to measles, how many people would develop measles having been exposed to one uh, individual. And that number for measles is 12 to 18, which is very high, much higher than many of the other viral diseases that are listed on this, uh, on this slide. So it's incredibly infectious. That means we need a high level of immunity in a population to prevent the kinds of outbreaks that are occurring right now. So prior to measles vaccination, there were estimated to be five to eight million deaths per year due to measles. And there, with the uh, licensure of the vaccine, there was a dramatic decrease in the number of cases and then also the number of deaths uh, due to measles. So you'll hear more about the vaccine, but it has had an, uh, a, an incredible effect on decreasing the number of cases of, uh, of this disease. Now the virus is, a, um, is, an, is an RNA virus, it's an envelope virus, its picture is here. It's related to uh, a number of other viruses that cause species-specific disease. So this is a human virus, it really only causes disease in, in humans. And another virus that you may be familiar with is canine distemper virus because we also vaccinate dogs for that very serious disease, which is a relative of measles. And so it has on the surface, uh, there are two, uh, two proteins that, that you can see, uh, the, the green one and the, and the blue one on the, on the surface, which allow the virus then to infect uh, other cells. And it does that, since it's an envelope virus, it does that by fusing with the uh, cells that, uh, that are targets for infection. So the, uh, the attachment protein, which is the green one, or the hemagglutinin, is the, uh, is, is what, uh, is the target for neutralizing antibody, which is one of the main mechanisms by which we develop protective immunity and become immune to, uh, uh, to subsequent infection uh, with, this, uh, with this virus. Because there's, uh, those proteins allow for fusion of the virus with the infected cell, infected cells are also expressing those, viruses, those proteins on the surface, and the, the kind of effect that a measles virus replication in cells has on cells is to allow them to fuse uh, to each other so that uh, you get the formation of giant cells, which are most easily seen on the right here, 
pointer is not working. So most easily seen on, on the right where you can see lots of nuclei within a, a giant cell and the yellow staining is the measles virus protein. So there's <coughs> this, uh, and this kind of pathology is seen in the lungs of, uh, of people who have uh, measles and also the lymphatic tissue of people with measles. So the virus is spread by the respiratory route. So uh, you uh, inhale uh, virus that's either suspended in air or is in droplets that have been sneezed or coughed out. And the basic pathogenesis is described here, and um, we'll just uh, highlight a few, a few facts. First of all, uh, the virus replication starts in the respiratory tract, but then it spreads systemically. So it spreads to uh, primarily lymphoid tissue, but also to the skin, because you eventually have a rash, to liver, et cetera. So it's a very widespread uh, infection. And <clears throat> during that, period of time, it, the disease, uh, the infection is essentially asymptomatic. Uh, the, the virus is spreading rapidly throughout the body, but the person doesn't start feeling sick until later. The, the symptoms in the second uh, panel there are mainly the rash, and a little bit prior to the rash are some uh, fever and cough, et cetera, that may occur. That rash is a manifestation of the, actually, the immune response to the, to the virus. So it takes that 10 or 14 days to actually be able to develop an immune response that then allows the uh, virus to start to be cleared from the, uh, from the body. So one of the early manifestations are these coplic spots, which is a little white uh, spot. I don't know if there's any, oops. Mm. Uh, no, dear. Well, anyway, complex spots. But <laughs> the complications, I don't seem to be able to reverse things here. There we go. Uh, so the complex spots are an early manifestation. So sometimes before the rash, you, uh, measles can be diagnosed uh, with fever and observation of these uh, complex spots. Uh, <clears throat> If you look at the rash itself, uh, then as I said, it's a manifestation of the immune response. So it's a bumpy red rash, and in, in that rash, if you biopsy the rash and look to see what's there, there's measles virus infected cells, but there's also uh, lymphocytes that are specific for the virus that are responding to the virus and eventually clearing the virus from, uh, from that tissue that then allows recovery from infection. But as I mentioned, it's, uh, it's a cause of death, and that's not the case for most childhood uh, rash diseases. So it's a much more severe rash disease than, uh, than many uh, others, uh, rubella, for instance. Uh, and the causes of death are these kinds of complications. Uh, so the, the top three are diarrhea, otitis media, and pneumonia are actually all complications that are primarily due to other infectious diseases. So people recovering from measles or with measles are more susceptible to other diseases that then uh, require antibiotic treatment, uh, et cetera. So the deaths are most often due to pneumonia, and those are usually bacterial pneumonias. But in addition, there are neurologic complications. And so encephalomyelitis is an autoimmune disease and was one of the driving forces for development of a measles vaccine. Vaccine. Because even though it only occurs in one in a thousand uh, individuals, the, the likelihood of having very long-term uh, sequelae uh, such as um, cognitive deficits, seizures, uh, paralysis, etc., uh, after in those that recover is, is very high. And one of the diseases that uh, complications, neurologic complications that is of, of, of interest is subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, or SSPE, on this slide. Again, not a common complication, but an indication that this virus can cause persistent infection and uh, late complications of, uh, of infection. So this is a fatal neurologic disease, but it doesn't uh, appear clinically until seven to 10 years after the original uh, virus infection. So understanding how we actually recover from measles is uh, one of the questions that our laboratory has been uh, particularly interested in. 
Now, sometimes uh, it's thought that, well, all these complications and deaths, et cetera, are only occurring elsewhere, uh, in Africa, et cetera. And it's true, the mortality rates are much higher in developing countries, primarily be because of access to medical treatment for those secondary infections that, uh, that occur. But this is a, uh, a, a compilation of, uh, of uh, complications that are occurring in the United States. Uh, the white bars are hospitalizations, and, you, and this is uh, different ages, and so you can see the youngest uh, individuals and the oldest individuals are most likely to develop complications that require hospitalization. In addition, diarrhea and pneumonia and deaths do occur in the U.S. and Europe, et cetera, as well as in developing countries. The only intervention that we have for measles once you develop this disease is vitamin A, and I have to mention that because it's been an important contribution of Al Sommer here in, at Johns Hopkins, but it was noticed the, the orange bars are, are uh, mortality uh, in the absence of vitamin A, and the white uh, the yellow bars are how, uh, what the mortality is if you supplement children with vitamin A. So vitamin A, and these are three different types of studies have been shown uh, to definitely decrease the, uh, the mortality. But other than that, we have no interventions other than antibiotics for these secondary bacterial infections that that may occur. So uh, <clears throat> one of the, uh, the questions in, in our lab has been understanding the reasons for complication and how you establish uh, long-term immunity. And so how well is the virus cleared and how, how does the immune response that's generated during infection lead to lifelong uh, immunity. This is a goal for many vaccine uh, programs, and if we could understand it better for the natural disease, perhaps that would help us to, uh, to be able to uh, uh, apply that to what we know about vaccines. Well, one of the things our studies have shown is that there is a, a lot of virus, that's the blue uh, shaded thing, is the amount of virus that's circulating in the blood uh, during uh, infection, and then the appearance of the rash, the uh, red bar, uh, is associated with clearance of, of that virus and, and recovery, the fever goes away, uh, et cetera. But there's a very long period of time during which the, uh, that actually is required for the virus to be cleared uh, completely. So we can continue to find viral RNA and respiratory secretions, blood, urine, et cetera, for very long periods of time, months after infection, and may help us to understand some of the, uh, of the consequences of, uh, the, the later consequences of viral, uh, of measles virus infection. And, and perhaps uh, why uh, immune suppression is a, is a major issue, and also perhaps these late uh, manifestations like SSPE, where virus has never actually been cleared from those uh, individuals. So in summary, uh, measles is a highly infectious human rash disease that causes a substantial morbidity and mortality, and the only interventions that we have are vitamin A and antibiotics. And, and it's a serious disease in developed countries as well as developing countries. And the virus is cleared slowly, and so we, the, some of the late complications of measles, we don't completely understand how that happens. But there is immune, the immune suppression and susceptibility to other infections. These late neurologic con uh, complications like uh, SSPE, the induction of autoimmune diseases like the, uh, the uh, encephalomyelitis, but then also development of lifelong immunity after recovery. So thank you. Okay. Um, there is time for one, one moderator question. Your <laughs> okay. questions I'll ask during the, the, during the panel. Um, the slide you showed with, with uh, being able to find viral RNA for weeks out, um, when a child or, or anyone has measles, uh, the, the current recommendation is four days after the rash they can go about their business. Why are they no longer contagious? Right, so we can't recover infectious virus. So if we try to culture the virus, we can't do that for, you know, four days out is a, a good uh, time frame. Um, <clears throat> but, but we know the virus is continuing to produce proteins, it's continuing to stimulate the immune response during this period of time. But there's no evidence that, that those individuals are infectious for other individuals after 
the rash is cleared. Thanks very much. Uh -huh. uh, so get your questions for Dr. Griffin, and uh, we'll, we'll address those in, in a little bit.